Today we're going to go over the top 5 mistakes made by new artists. I think if you learn to identify and avoid these mistakes, that you're going to learn a lot quicker, faster, and better. <laughs> Number 1. Thinking supplies are everything. Supplies don't matter. No, not at all. No! The first thing I see people do is they go straight up to the art store and buy the most expensive thing they can possibly get their hands on, thinking that this is somehow going to be like a magic wand or the pills from Limitless. This isn't going to automatically make you a better artist. What it is going to make you a better artist is hard work, and the tools are really just a small part of that. Doesn't matter what brand, generally. My teacher once said that if all he had was a rusty nail and dirt, he would come up with a beautiful image. That's a rough analogy, but I hope that kind of makes a connection. <laughs> Number two, wanting a result immediately. Being good at art and drawing is not something you're born with. This isn't like being gay. When I was a little kid in kindergarten, and you see those kids that were drawing at a super young age, the majority of those kids don't do it anymore. Some do, don't get me wrong, but a lot of them don't. When you draw as a little kid, you have an interest in drawing, and because of that interest, you practice more. Of course, and because of all this practice, you become better. I started to draw at 17. I know other people that started at 28. I know other people that started at 38. There's never too late to draw. And the only way to get better is through practice and interest. Don't expect a result right out the gate. <laughs> Number three, ignoring the basic. Drawing is work. How much work? A lot of work. If you want to be a professional artist, it's a ton of repetition and practice. Don't get me wrong, there's a bunch of fun in between all the work. Like actually putting down on paper this thing that came out of your mind and you're literally creating it. That's amazing. What's the hard work? The hard work is actually getting to the point where you can do that because that requires knowledge of anatomy, perspective, structure, shading, learning how things move, pivot points, composition, everything. You have to learn the basics and drill them over and over in order to make them muscle memory, in order to make them seamless. Think about it this way, when you're learning to play guitar, you learn a couple of notes and then a few more notes and then eventually you're going to know a song. The thing is you're ingraining these things into your hand, into your muscle, into your memory so that you don't have to think note for note anymore. It's the same in art. <laughs> Number four, hardly practicing. This part is basically being lazy. You know, I had a student one time and she would practice once a week. Now, if you practice the piano once a week, how good do you think you will become at the piano? Yeah, you could be okay, but not, not good, you know? But if you wanna be good or great at something, including drawing, you have to practice almost every day or at least five days a week. And look, if you just wanna do this as a hobby, I get it, you don't really have to practice that much. I'm talking about for people that wanna blow through that beginner stage as fast as they possibly can so they can get into intermediate and start creating things. <laughs> Number five, being too hard on yourself. When you're going through the beginning stages, it's really easy to get bogged down, you know, because you're drawing stuff and it doesn't come out the way you want it to. But you have to stay positive the entire time. This is the fun part. The failure is the fun part. Every single picture that you fail is another step toward your awesome picture. I had another teacher once tell me that think about your thousandth drawing. At your thousand, thousandth drawing, that's when it's going to be good. I mean, that's an exaggeration, but, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun getting there. So don't even worry about these first few. Stay positive. Every failure is another brick in your palace. And P.S. Don't throw away your drawings. Never throw away your drawings. That's going to be how you track your progress a few weeks or months or even years from now. And you're going to look back and you're going to see how much you've jumped forward and how much you've improved. Thanks a lot guys for watching the video and uh, this is actually a refurbished video from the Enzyme Art channel and uh, I'm merging the Enzyme Art channel onto this particular channel. Uh, this particular video talked a lot about the kind of the tips in terms of practices, in terms of like principles that you apply to your art, not so much the, you know, the how-to mechanical stuff. Uh, it's more about the mind kind of thing, you know, how you should think about this and how you should look at that. And I'm going to make an entire program based on this concept. It's going to be called the 22 steps to becoming a better artist. And I'm not going to release it yet. I'm going to release it in about like a month. I'm still recording it and then I'm going to go test it and then I'm going to run it by, you know, artist friends and they're going to look at it and I'm going to throw a tiny bit of animation very similar to this video. But this video is pretty close to what it's going to be like. It's just I'm going to have a, 
you know, bigger, more out there version of it uh, on the net. But if you want to get an update on it on when it comes out, just subscribe to the newsletter, you know, put your email here and I will announce it. It'll be in your inbox and it'll be like, hey, it's out, it exists. Um, pretty much it, if you want updates, you know, click here and you can sign up for the email list if you haven't already. If you're already on the email list, don't worry about it. Anyways, thanks a lot guys and I'll talk to you later.